horror movie fans, welcome to the Cold and Trash Horror Movie Grind the Podcast. I am your host, Ian. This is the show in which we grind on the absolute worst horror and sci-fi movies we can find and make fun of just how bad they are, as well as praise the good cool classics that have been lost throughout time. Now get ready, because we're about to dive real deep inside of Hollywood's dumpster in search of the good, the so bad it's good, and the fucking ugly. Now put on your seatbelt, grab a beer or two, and enjoy the show. Yo, color out of space. That's what's happening today. Uh, what what is that? Yeah, it's a movie that totally flew under the radar and nobody's ever heard about, but I did. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, actually a combination of three things that uh, I'm really gonna talk about a lot in the show. One being, well, it's Lovecraftian or is a Lovecraft-esque. But I will talk about that, but really it's like a, a Lovecraft story. Also, it's cage exploitation. This is, uh, we got Nicolas Cage and uh, his regular Nicolas Cage rage. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about Spectre Vision, which uh, I definitely have a real hard on for. It's a company produced by, or created and ran by... Elijah Wood, and yeah, so uh, this is the first movie that we've done on this show that is both Spectre Vision and Cage Exploitation, but our second Lovecraft esque movie. But uh, yeah, so um, yeah, we'll get into it. Bree is here. What's up, Bree? Oh, uh, you, you're muted. <laughs> Whoops. Have the alpaca stop screaming, Ian? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the the alpacas in this movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I got the alpacas, but you caught me off guard with that. But, but um, hey, week. well, anyway, in the words of Stained, it, it's been a while. It has been a while. Wow. You caught me off guard with that. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a while. Uh, thank you for having me back. Mm-hmm. I'm so I'm so thrilled. I love this podcast. I love being with you and all of our guests. So thank yeah, you for having for me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I I actually would. I decided I wanted to do Color of Space. Uh, there there were two people uh, on my mind. One is our our guest that uh, he, I'll bring him in here in a second. Uh, second one is uh you like i know that you're you're a big fan of uh cage exploitation that is true i am a fan of cage exploitation you can't see it but uh i actually have a funko pop which i i'm oh, yeah. not a fan of funko pop but uh of uh nick cage and mandy so yeah but that I, is I, one of the few I I I love Mandy too, which, yes. by the way, is another Spectre Vision movie. That is true. Hashtag, uh, please sponsor I us, Elijah. Spectre Vision. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that and Lovecraft movies as well. I it's like the uh-huh. perfect mix of all three. I can't get enough of it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And um, well, I'm I'm gonna go back to you for a second, but let me also introduce Johnny is back. What's up, Johnny? Uh, thank you for having me. It's uh, always, always a pleasure. Cool. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, we, we just had you on for another uh, Lovecraft-esque movie, which was From Beyond. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, that was definitely, uh, definitely a movie. <laughs> that, uh... <laughs> it was entertaining. No, I'm kidding. It was entertaining. Uh, we, we, had a, we had fun with it. You know, I, I really, I didn't really know a ton about Lovecraft style films, you know, let alone the short stories that, you know, he had created all uh-huh. those, you know, decades ago. Um, but really this, this podcast in particular and your old one, you know, really helped introduce me to it. Yeah. Um, and I, I've slowly, slowly started to become a fan, slowly started to come awesome. around. Nice. That's uh, yeah. cool. Yeah. It, it's what it, it's hard to like really not enjoy those Lovecraftian 
yeah. stories. They're, they're, they're so they're ridiculous. Just, they're ridiculous, <laughs> but they're also like really interesting, way out of the box. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, but uh, and then this is, like I said earlier, this is the first movie we've done on this show, which is uh, Nicolas Cage. And why I call it Cage Exploitation is just because he, <laughs> he's like in a genre of his own. He is. <laughs> it's very um, accurate. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I plan to do a lot of his movies. So interesting enough, this is the first one. I, I didn't think it would be Color of Space. But um, I don't know. It just worked out that way. But I mean, we'll do others. Uh, yeah, I thought you would have done Mandy yeah. to start out, to be yeah. quite honest. Um, I, and I'm still too. pushing <laughs> pushing for you to do Willy's Wonderland at some point. That was, yes. that yes. was a lot of fun. Yeah. That, actually, was a, that was gore fest right there. Bree and I were actually planning for that to be our first episode. Yeah, that didn't happen. Oh yeah. Oh For man, sure. that would have been uh, fun. That was a great. That's movie. all right. Yeah. Creep show was Creep Zero was still an excellent choice. Yeah. Mm. If I do uh, say so, as the topic chooser myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I mentioned on that episode that the uh, one of the short stories in that one is a lot like this one, which is partially why I chose this one because uh, we we mentioned Color Out of Space on that first episode because it's similar to to that story. Right. Uh, before, but before we get into that, Brie, I, I just want to say uh, Merry Christmas and you're welcome. Okay. For that. Uh, for what? Secret <laughs> Santa. That was you. Yep, that was me. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna leave the <laughs> camera. Hold on. You gotta let me grab this. Hold on. Yeah. What? Like what is this? Hold on. <laughs> well, what the fuck? You didn't get me anything. Where's my present? Come on. Uh, well, we we did uh, a <laughs> on the uh, Facebook group. Maybe so bad they're good, but not cool classics in camp. All the admin team, we did a Secret Santa thing, and she is a, an I, admin. I, I see how it is. I didn't know who it was. Well, you're not an admin. Yeah. I, well, I, whose I, fault I, is that? I purposely didn't tell you until this episode. All right. <laughs> are y'all ready for this? Here we go. Are you ready, Johnny? I am so, so ready. Wait, hold, beyond ready. Hold, I'm ready. Hold, hold on a second. Okay. There, oh, wait, sure. That's not oh. the one I wanted. <laughs> oh, God. There we go. Da, da, da. Is that supposed to be like a, a, a what is it like a, a pillowcase? It's a pillowcase. Okay, it right. is. Look I like just a, haven't found a pillow a yet, unfortunately. Okay. See, I thought it was a pillow when I ordered it. <laughs> oh, that's fair. I mean, I I will buy a pillow specifically for that pillowcase. Next right target run for but yeah. yeah uh, why, why don't you explain for those listening who aren't on YouTube but are listening to the podcast form what what we just saw? Uh, or yes, or actually um, Johnny, since you're the one who just saw it. Yeah. <laughs> why don't you explain? From memory, right explain now. Explain it to me. <laughs> All right. You got it, Johnny. All you. You heard it? Yeah. I did. Oh, no, no, no. Got, explain yeah, it what, to what me. is it? Yeah, explain it. Explain it to me. I don't. I don't. I don't know what it is. <laughs> this is great. I'm, I'm, this, this, is, this is great. Good podcasting so far. material. Mm-hmm. All right. So, it is the Mona Lisa, but instead of the beautiful Mona Lisa face, it is the more beautiful Nick Cage face. <laughs> uh, and it really, is a really case. like well crafted. Cage rage down. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. And it's uh, the scene in Vampire's Kiss where he's like, you don't say, mm-hmm. and it, you know, if you, uh, yeah. you're a fan of the cage exploitation, you'll know. Yeah, you that, know that's you know. definitely a movie I I, okay. uh, I definitely want to cover. I, I haven't even Sloan, heard of that. Sloan is going to, <laughs> it, it's it's one uh-huh. of the movies that actually put the cage on a map. It's one of his earliest films. The bad uh, map, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, he turns into a vampire mm-hmm. and he's just... It's like all the full cage rage you, you can want. Yeah, baby. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, so that that's what we'll we'll cover. Brie, what's a, what's another movie you think that would fit this podcast? That uh, apart from Willy's Wonderland, Mandy. Mm-hmm. Um, I know maybe this is a stretch to stay in advance. Uh, but his new movie coming out, uh, which is The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, uh, and Pig. Uh... Pig would also be very interesting. You think yeah. Pig, I, I don't How see, was that? Yeah, yeah, me, Sloan, and Tony went to go see that when it came out. And we all agreed it, it wouldn't really fit this podcast. Fair enough. Um, if you're looking for, like, just straight bad, no. I mean, if we're talking cult, yes. Because, I mean, there's going to be 
the very niche audience that's like, oh yeah, yeah this is like uh, it's uh, for sure. Uh, uh, but if we're talking bad, Vampire's Kiss, we could do Face Off. Face Off would be very interesting. Well, yeah, that's not a horror movie though. That's a, oh, that's, that's right. That. Okay, that's right. As uh, <laughs> yeah. Pig, also. That's true. That's true. Um, ooh, trying to think and of any Ma- other horror and movies Mandy apart just from Mandy. Of, like barely, barely fits. Right. Because of all um, the gore, so it's like a. Uh, oh, what's that one where he's like uh, switching bodies or? He's, no, no, no. The one where he's the killer parent. Is it parents? Oh my god. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, killer parents, and he's trying to kill his kids. Oh. Yeah, like I said, great podcasting. Uh, us just sitting here <laughs> that's, for that's three every minutes. Episode. Mom and dad. Mom and dad. Mom and dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mom and dad. Yeah. Okay. That could work. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll look into that. Cool. Well, um, yeah, I guess let's go ahead and get into Color of Outer Space. So, uh, uh, well, uh, real quick, I'll, I'll go into this, what Spectre Vision is. It's, uh, I, I mentioned it earlier. It, it's Elijah Wood's production company, and he, he produced this film. He produced Mandy. He produced uh, a few other. All, it's all mostly horror films. So a lot of those can fit here, like Cooties. I, I want to do Cooties. <laughs> Um, that that's a good one. And uh, but what what makes it so special? And, and I've Johnny, I've been on your podcast many times about it to talk about it. It's yeah. it's the uh, uh, what was it called? The like the color palette. The um, mm. I, I'm I'm blanking on the name for some reason, but yeah, Wait, it's the, the color palette. Yeah, yeah. The, um, yeah, the color photography, cinematography. I, I'm I'm fucking stupid. Yeah, I mean, the production <laughs> design. I, I just wasn't sure what you were. Looking but yeah, at. yeah, no, that that's it. Um, so I think Color Out of Space is probably one of the best cinematography and Spectra Vision. Which, like, what 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 were your thoughts on it? Like, visually, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, it was very well. It's very it's very well done. That's for sure. Um, I actually was noticing that really from the first. Really, from the first, you know, 10 shots, you can tell mm-hmm. that they they hired a very, ex- probably a pretty experienced DP, but they definitely got, they definitely got kind of, they were paying, it almost seemed like they were paying homage to some of the, some of the older uh, cult classics from like the 90s and stuff. You saw a yeah. lot of I- isolation shots, um, mm-hmm. which are typically used to convey, obviously, that, well, what the, what the word describes, a sense of isolation, you know, a sense that even though if there are other people around, Everything that's going down, everything in the world that matters is right there in that one shot, you know, right there in that one room between the person and whatever's going on between them. Um, You know, so you saw a lot of like you saw a lot of like high angle, like shots coming up from the ceiling. Uh, You know, you shot the, uh, the shot I loved. Oh, man, I really loved was when the youngest son at the beginning goes to the well. And he's uh-huh. looking for stars, and then you see yeah. the opposite shot where it's like it's the picture coming through the water and looking back up at them, and you see their faces in the sky. Um, you know, I, I love it when mm-hmm. they're able to actually. I don't. I don't know how how they shot that. I don't know if they put you know one of their cameras inside of one of those waterproof. Um, a lot of times to shoot underwater, they'll put them in those waterproof cases that are like big rectangular boxes, um, and sometimes it'll be CGI. This one didn't seem to be CGI. Um, but you know, I love you know those shots. Like when you when you watch um like Memento, I was watching the other night. They had a lot of really great shots of the camera looking through the mirror at Guy oh, Pierce yeah. directly in the face. Right. And it's it's like you you see those shots and you realize that the people are going crazy or about to go crazy. You know, it definitely <laughs> it definitely foreshadows something something morbid or horrible is going to happen. But but those shots in particular, it just I don't know. For me, it, it just kind of gets me in the mood. Um, and I know those are kind of very subtle things. Um, mm. But if you that the average person may not really pick up on. But if if you if it's always in the back of your mind and you're looking for that in horror suspense films, then it kind of it gets you going. Like it, you know, it, it gets yeah. it gets you ready for the rest of the movie. That, that's you know? something you you actually bring up a lot um, on our Swamp Zombies two episode that you came on. You, you well, <laughs> we, we we started talking about pretty much like the same thing really and you brought up uh what what was it uh that uh six cents and then uh-huh. you said basically a very similar thing to what you mm-hmm. just said just now and that like that stuff that like i don't think about like to me 
I don't know. Like, I just I, I enjoy the pretty colors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that fuchsia but, uh, was gorgeous. <laughs> don't yeah, get me wrong. yeah. But uh, like, when, when that see, that's why like I have somebody like you on here because you you uh, you bring up things that like I didn't even think about it. I'm like, wow. And so now, probably the next time I, I watch this movie, it'll you're be, gonna think about it. <laughs> pardon the pun, but in a new color. Yeah, it's it's crazy because when I when I talk with other friends of mine that work in different departments in uh-huh. film and TV and stuff, and we talk when we go see movies together or we're talking about films that we had just recently seen, uh, all by separately or not, a lot of them come from they're on grip and electric, so they're looking at the lighting. You know, they come from production design, so they're looking at the design of the settings, the color palette, and the costume. You know, they come from the cinematography world, so they're looking at those shots you're talking about, actor, right. and so forth. You know, so it's it's really interesting to chat with those people that that's what they do for a living, and you're talking with them, and instead of like me, you know me, I'm big on story for the most part. That's my biggest thing is script. Um, with a lot of them, they're like, oh, I didn't even realize that. But they're like, oh, did you notice in, you know, the eighth scene in 30 minutes, you know, they're like, oh, this color and this color connected, like, in the back corner of the room, and it shadowed the guy's left side of the face, and it made him more, more realistic. Or, I don't know, some bullshit like that. Um, <laughs> but it's, it is cool It is cool to think about that, you know, and I think... Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. No, I With, love it. Yeah. I, like, I ate that up. Uh, yeah. I, also, back Good on that Swamp Zombies 2 episode, I brought up Arch Enemy, which is... Another, oh, yeah. Yeah. you guessed it, Spectre Vision movie, <laughs> um, where, which is a really good example of that, where the characters in that movie they wear the colors of their personalities. So, like one girl who's she, she's a street hustler, she right. sells drugs and stuff. She's just all decked out in blue. Her name is Indigo, and she is just <laughs> so blue. And so that obviously is the color of, of like I guess realism. And her energy, Blue yeah, the color yeah, exactly. of your energy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then her brother is he? He's all about. He's like in a fantasy world. He he he's all about like he's going to make it one day, and he he wants to show like. He, he, like he he wants to become big. He's a dreamer, so he's like red and orange and yellow. He's a bunch of so warm colors. While she's a bunch you of cool would say colors. Amber is the color of his energy. Yeah, I guess you. I'm I'm not getting the joke you're making though. <laughs> you don't know that song. <laughs> uh, it's like no. Amber is the color of your energy. Oh, Damn, okay. <laughs> that was I'm awkward. sorry. I, I just completely ruined that for you. <laughs> but uh i think it's even more funny now <laughs> but uh yeah uh, probably yeah a bunch of people watching this are like damn what a, what an idiot just like, yeah good podcasting yeah, yeah. or they yeah. think well this, at least this dude's not old for knowing that song i'm, I'm definitely <laughs> older than you for sure yeah it's like an old people song never mind yeah. apparently uh, yeah. my bye bye is old these kids my born students. in the 80s shit uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, back back to the colors and color out of space. Like I'd say is yeah. I mean, everything you said is great. Like th- there's meaning behind it, but also is very aesthetically pleasing. And I actually I have I have a clip actually right here. Uh, Five to ten seconds, they swap between different angles. Which Spectre Vision is really good about, like especially in like Mandy. Right. Um. But uh, yeah, I, I just I just love it. Like that was just beautiful, which is ironic because it's such a terrifying scene. <laughs> yeah, the minute that you brought up, you know, the beautiful color palette, that is the exact scene I was thinking about. So yeah. I'm really glad that was the clip that you showed because that yeah. the yeah. flowers, the air that's moving around, just mm-hmm. is perfect. Yeah, and everything's pink. So let's talk about that. So this is unique. Which uh, I I think is great because it's it's Lovecraftian, but uh, yeah. So this comet that comes down, it is pink. It's literally a color out of space, and that color is pink. Uh, but what were your thoughts on that? Like, do you think that that was an interesting choice? Do you think that the like they nailed it? And as far as like something being eerie or terrifying, or was it really distracting? Do you think that they probably should have gone with something else? Um, either of y'all can jump in. I think it was the right choice. I think pink is very unassuming. 
So if maybe mm-hmm. they did catch a glimpse of that, maybe in it's the water. Thing. So there's a scene where there's an ice cube in Nicolas Cage's bourbon and that reflected that little bit of pink. It's a very unassuming color. Plus, I mean, when we're talking about lighting, like kind of what you're talking about, Johnny, if we're talking about thinking about lighting, things like that, it's something that doesn't necessarily drown out somebody. Pink is kind of this illumination color. So it doesn't drown out the character to the point where you can't see them. I, I think it was the right color choice. I like it. I agree. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, what about you? Yeah, well, I was going to say that it's, I mean, I know normally pink or purple, you wouldn't consider it to be a neutral color because on a, on the on the wheel, it's not. But yeah, in something like this, it is because it, typically what? Uh, yellow conveys joy or happiness. Typically red okay. conveys maybe evil or lust or stuff. But with right. pink and purple, especially in cinema history, it's not as like Bree was like you're saying, Bree. It's not as common, you know. So it is an unassuming color and stuff. So it was it was an interesting pick. And I was when I was reading up on some uh, reviews earlier today on this, uh, you know, they talked about in Lovecraft's original story. Th- there's no way of he he in literary terms he he explains it. He spells it out, but he said mm-hmm. it's a color that's never been witnessed before by human. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And then so I was I I actually I do wonder how the director came to the decision to use a, a fuchsia or, or whatever the the correct color may actually be um so that that was right. i thought it was a good choice i, w- I would agree i i don't absolutely. think i think if he had gone with something more common it wouldn't have worked yeah yeah absolutely yeah it, it's so alien yeah uh, it is like, it, it really is yeah. uh like when the cops come the next day uh the cage's character he says uh, it was pink or i don't know some color i've never seen before uh, yeah, <laughs> and it's not just it's not just pink. It's it's like or fuchsia. It's like a very uniquely like something about the shading it is like I it's it's like dark but bright at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's very strange but looking. calming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially yeah. when it comes down and and you see it like from on the inside of the house from the windows and stuff. And there's just this like layer of just eerie pink, just coming down. And like, that is, I thought it was really pretty terrifying. I was watching it with my girlfriend at the time when I first saw it. And she just like, Nope. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what's scarier that color or Nick cage thrusting with his pants still on. (laughs) (laughs) Both kind of terrifying, actually. Both a little terrifying. I may go with the Nick Cage. <laughs> Although yeah, if he came no, came on to me, I would have a hard time saying no. Just saying. <laughs> Take me, Nick Cage. Let me have your children. <laughs> this is what we're about. This is good podcasting, guys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's an on-running gag now. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Like dude, there's sex exploitation movies, and uh, this is cage exploitation. Exploitation, <laughs> man. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So, I, I um, there there were actually studies that I'm, I'm not sure how long ago, but that there were like some college students that accidentally like invented a new shade of blue that's never been found oh. before. Oh, and God. I've seen a picture of it. Uh, I feel maybe, like I'm maybe. about to get rip grilled. Oh no! No 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 no. Okay. I mean, I I appreciate you, like <laughs> assuming so. I I really do appreciate that. But uh, no, it's not. Uh, but I I will bring it up though. So it's it's like I saw a picture of it. It's, it's on uh, the internet. Um. Are you, the, are you gonna like show me blue waffle now? Oh no! No no no. <laughs> Uh, I have been on the internet too long. <laughs> uh, just a second. Um, but yeah, it's like I've never seen this blue before, and it is incredible. Uh, right here. Oh wow! Okay, wow. I'm glad. Hmm. Yeah, like royal blue. That's nice. Yeah. It, it's just. Uh, well. Um. Uh, yeah. It's it's like darker yeah it's like yeah royal blue is, is like a good way to say it but it's like not quite that either how do you uh, even discover a new color like maybe <laughs> that's like my question yeah 
Um, what are you you doing every day of your life if you're just sitting there like throwing (laughs) different colors together hell yeah i I would i would love to do that i don't know if i'd like that that as my full-time job i feel like that would be really boring (laughs) after a while you know until you just cover the bluest blue you've ever seen that's true and make or or the pinkest pink but uh yeah so that that kind of reminded me of that as like imagine if there was a color that came out of space that you've never seen before Uh, like how uh, crazy that it would be. Uh, this movie shows it, it's literally crazy. Like everybody loses their mind and goes insane. Yeah. <laughs> which is, Everybody. which is uh, what I appreciate that about uh, like the whole Lovecraftian movie. So that's like the, the theme basically of all the Lovecraft stories is uh, people mm-hmm. descend into madness. Uh, that's what we see here. Like yeah. all the characters, um, mostly in occasion and the daughter but like that we see them i would say slowly but it, it's kind of a short movie so a little quicker descend into madness um if i don't think i don't think the the way the style of acting that nick cage has there's there's usually there's there's kind of there's three nick cages kind of thing you know there's mm-hmm. there's action there's action movie nick cage there's ridiculous obscure goofy nick cage which we saw in Mm. this and then we see the nick cage where he's attempting to do a dramatic role which typically is the one that falls flat on his face but he he's he's just he's like he's like a keanu reeves he's like a bruce willis he's like um what what is that guy in from oh god sid something you love him he's like he back in uh the 80s he was really big in the 90s he was in house of a thousand corpses um oh sid cade City. There you go. Thank you. Gotcha. He he was in a ton of these types of movies back in the day, right? Like that's what he was known for. I feel like yeah. Nick Cage is our generation in the sixties and seventies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like Nick Cage. He's found. He's found his niche. You know. He. I've been. I'm really big on actors adapting to their surroundings. You know. They're. They're. Yeah. Dan Aykroyd. I always bring him up. Uh, he's done such a great job of. He was a leading actor in the 70s, 80s, kind of 90s, and then he started to revert to smaller roles, and he found he found a way to stay in the limelight, you know, and Nick Cage has done just that. He's not the action star anymore, and he's not the leading man that he once was. He's gotten older, but he's found mm-hmm. this niche with, with Spectre Vision, um, and his style of acting, especially for a cult kind of obscure film like this, it works. Oh, and absolutely. it's just it's perfect casting on it. Um and it, it it wouldn't work in any other movie. Like the scenes where he's getting upset and you can tell that he's he's trying to show that intensity, that anger yeah. that he's actually going like insane. We, what we just watched. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't work it wouldn't work in a standard drama script. People would be like, why yeah. is no, why, right. what, where'd they find this guy? Like did he just get out of an improv group or something? Like <laughs> I, you uh-huh. know, it, it, it wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah. It's uh I would even like. I w- I want to compare uh, that uh, that point you just made. I want to compare him exactly to the others that you did. Like, well, what I meant by that or, is he. I I didn't mean uh, they were the same acting styles. I meant that they yeah. each had a particular niche that they were very good at, oh, and they okay, stayed yeah. in that lane. You know, they, I, didn't, I, I, they didn't drift over. I was about to drop uh, Tommy Wiseau. Whoa! Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know about that one. <laughs> Uh, I think also on top of, you know, the -the over-the-top acting, he plays a really good dad of three. You know, the ridiculousness (laughs) that you have to be to be a dad of three. It was like, guess what time it is? It's dishwashing time. (laughs) It's alpaca milking time, you know? Yeah, that's like the perfect role for him. It's either over-the-top, you're going crazy, or he is a dad of three. Right. Okay. True. Um, I have a clip right here uh that y'all should definitely see uh just a moment i'm clicking the wrong thing by accident uh okay <laughs> I don't know they made a second one. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know what's funny? Have you ever seen the uh, the music video for uh, the but- neighborhood? Uh, Scary Love by the Neighborhood. They got Tommy Wiseau. 
Oh, plays really? Tommy Wiseau in this music video. It is phenomenal. That's awesome. It just <laughs> doesn't matter. Movie, music video, Tommy Wiseau is Tommy Wiseau. As long as yeah, so the, uh, anyway, Johnny, you just reminded me of that because, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> because like only Tommy Wiseau can, can pull that off in Samurai Cop 2. Uh, <laughs> uh, but now I want to see Col- Color of Space starring Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> oh, God. I would, I would watch anything a... Tommy Wiseau's in. So. House of Drip Blood on Alex, does this does that qualify for this channel? I mean, it's only like ten minutes long, but I mean, I mean, I mean <laughs> it is. Then again, it is a uh, like a parody of an actual horror movie called The House That Drips Blood. Boom. So I'll keep that in mind, and then we can cover both. Gotcha, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, yeah. So I guess the the whole yeah the back to cage rage. Uh, yeah, Mandy. Is a perfect example of what you're talking about because he he witnesses his the love of his life being burned to death, and then th- this is a man who's they kind of hinted that he's been sober for a, a certain amount of time, and he just goes straight to the liquor and just throws that that same fit we pretty much just saw in that clip and the clip before, and um, which any other jo- uh, drama. It, if that same thing happened, like it, you're right, like it, it wouldn't really feel the same. I got, or if like another actor did it, but and Mandy, there, there's a whole five minute scene of him just chugging vodka and screaming <laughs> in the bathroom. Yeah, with, with his pants <laughs> on a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, with Nick Cage, he, he makes it work. But with these movies, um. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting how that works. But uh, yeah, so that niche you're talking about, yeah, so yeah, Mandy Color out of space. Um, trying to trying to think of some others, the more recent movies uh, that are big. cage cage exploitation. Okay, yeah, like well, Willy's big... Wonderland falls into that, of course. Yeah, um... is it cage exploitation though? If he doesn't actually talk, <laughs> I, yeah, mm-hmm. I'd say so. Yeah, for sure. I'd, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> But um, like yeah, so, uh, but he also has been in yeah. So let's talk about that. So he's been in. He's just been accepting every role that's been Everything. coming up, and most of them are, if not all of them, independent or okay. low budget, like like this one, Spectre Vision. Spectre Vision loves Nick Cage. He, like he he was in those two, and then there's another one that he came out and. Um, I'm not sure if it's Spectre Vision or not, but it, it, it said produced by the, the creators of Mandy and Color of Space. But um, it's uh, I keep forgetting uh, Prisoners of Ghostland. That, that's it. And that's another one that just came under the radar, and nobody really knows about it. Um, so, I don't even know about it. Really, I'm a cage exploitation fan. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's another Spectre Vision with, with the cage. Uh, basically, it, it's it's a lot. It's like a uh, an Asian slash like like kind of like oh Kung the Kung Fu, Fu one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, okay, yeah. now I know. Okay. Now yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, not not jujitsu, not not that one. Which is I another know what reason. You're one. Talking about but now. yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's like it's like kung fu slash like underworld type thing slash Mad Max slash mm. um, Escape from New York because is like they they put a bomb on his neck and like go out and save this person or else your head will explode, which is the same thing as. Uh, let's get from New York. Like the the Raiden character of Mortal Kombat, you know, he's the one that's like with hmm. the sagely advice and everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or maybe I'm thinking of a different one, I another think, Kung I think Fu might one. Be. Yeah. Oh God. Because I mean, the, Nick Cage and Kung Fu. Maybe right thinking now. of Jujitsu. I don't know. I didn't. See yeah, maybe one. I am. Maybe that's that, what I'm thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Prisoner of Ghostland is basically he he's a prisoner. In a city called Ghostland, wow. <laughs> and uh, Bill Mosley from House of Thousand Corpses and 
uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, he played Chopped Out. Mm. He, which is actually going to be next week's episode. Uh, All right. He, uh, he basically, he, uh, Cage is a prisoner and he, he lets Cage out and he says, my, uh, I, I don't know, his girlfriend or something is a prisoner at a, another, oh, actually, she's prisoner in Ghostland. And she sends Cage out to go rescue her, but he puts bombs on on his neck and his arms and his balls. And it's like, if you don't do this, you will explode. And basically, that's it. Why the hell Uh, did he need to put a bomb on his balls? Because one of them goes off. (laughs) He loses a ball in that movie. <laughs> that sucks. So he's Lance Armstrong. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. the, the one testicle wonder. Uh, we we lost Brie for a second, but she'll be back. Uh, but anyway, I love. I guess let's go back to color out of space. Um, so oh, yeah, Johnny, talking about. you just saw this for the first time. I did. Well, what's your? Uh, how is it? Thoughts on it? Yeah. No, I man. <laughs> I mean, without you know, giving my ratings away and stuff. I thought there were particular things and you know i always come back to script i thought there were particular things they could have jettisoned um they they hint Very early good. on that there's some shady crap going on in town with the mayor you see the mayor for yeah a couple minutes at the beginning and then she's like oh you should have sold this land to me when you had the chance and then they it's kind of like i've got breast cancer it didn't ever come up again you know so it was just, <laughs> just kind of random like it didn't it didn't need to be in there for any reason at all <laughs> like it's it's a filler but uh, Dude, the people who didn't get that reference are probably like, what? (laughs) They're like, oh, God, Johnny has breast cancer? Fuck! (laughs) We got to donate to his Kickstarter and save him. No. um, Yeah, there there are a couple plot holes, just like with any movie, of course, and especially with a a Lovecraftian kind of thing. You know, there's there's always going to be something. Oh, yeah. yeah, Because they're short stories, for the most part, or poems, or whatever, so you got to fill in I definitely didn't like the beginning of... Like it, it, it seemed really fake. Just the whole the script, the yeah. dialogue. It was uh, like I was turned yeah. off immediately. I was just I, like, "What the fuck is this?" I, I, I would normally I would I would agree with you. Normally, the, the reason that I thought this was needed at the beginning was to establish, which is what I like in a lot of scripts, is, is to establish the family connections and the family ties that they they don't just yeah, go right no, into it. And I no, think there's a reason absolutely. for it, even if it was I, I agree with that, but just, I'm talking about, like, the very beginning where the girl's on a horse and she sees the water guy. And Th- that was and, a little random. <laughs> out of phase, and, and mom. Just the way she talked, I, like, I don't, I don't even know how to really explain my yeah. dislike for it. It's just, it seemed very fake. Mm-hmm. And like they're like overacting kind of it yeah. seemed like a weird fantasy yeah the romance between her and the hydrologist i i it didn't it just kind of seemed <laughs> like they needed a romance and i'm like i mean you've got the mom and the dad what's the point of having this random dude and the daughter not yeah. even hook up really and they don't explore and she's like, like underage too yeah and, <laughs> and he's got to be in his 20s it just it yeah that one threw me off a little bit i was kind of like okay you could have you could have gotten rid of that too. but i i i'd did. say like it, it's when the comic comes down that's when it turned into a good movie before that sure. it was it was just crap <laughs> but but, Whoa, and, you, but mean you didn't like wa- dishwashing time Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was funny I, I, I like some of the 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 cute corny moments yeah uh, I mean, yeah, it was all right, but like, I just didn't like the dialogue. Basically, like, yeah. a script means a lot to me, unless it's like it's so bad it's a good film, yeah. and then it's oh, hilarious. The, the dialogue in this is cheesy all the way through. I mean, yeah. the story actually works for the most part, actually, uh-huh. which is strange. That I know it's weird that I'm saying that on a movie like this, but um, <laughs> I thought this, this, I, I, even if it was boring in the first ten minutes with all that going on, I do appreciate that they still set us up for the relationship and dynamics between all the characters because they yeah, don't do no, that in sure. a lot of in a lot of films like this. Yeah. They just jump right into it and you're expecting yeah, to know it, what's going it, it's on. like it's a family that they all love each other but they also can't stand each other and they just want to get yeah. away from each other. It's they're but in the middle at of the nowhere. Same time, like, yeah. they, but they as uh, they'll die for like that. Like you can see the love that they have for each other. Yeah, and it's like it's you and me 
no matter what. World. But yeah. I fucking hate you, and I can't stand being around you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, like one of those things. Like I can talk bad about my parents, but you can't fucking talk bad. About yeah, my parents. they're my parents. You know. Yeah, yeah. For if sure. I call them a dick, you can't call them a dick. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, yeah, that that's a really good point. Yeah, uh, I I do I do like that the whole family dynamic. Uh, I think I feel like it's rushed. Like I feel this movie could be better if it was longer. And if I it mean, was like an actual series. Yeah, maybe maybe a series, series be better. Yeah. Or yeah. or just a long ass movie. Maybe if it was three hours, I think it would be really good. I mean, it would yeah. be a commitment to watch. Yes. But, yes. I was about to say, you got to really sit down and commit to the next page like, for that. Here, here's the thing, though. Like, movie. people who complain about long movies will watch, a, a, will sit down and binge watch a series. Like, the, they'll watch one show, an uh, entire season of something for six hours. But then they'll be like, oh, that three hour long movie is too long. Okay, wait. <laughs> the Boys is worth binging. Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> that drama. I'm not going to sit down for that. No, I'm not Sorry. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just depends on the story but no i mean seriously i think i think it would be really good if it was a three i think a three hour long movie would be enough time to tell a story that it needed to tell and have all the character development i mean it was all there it just it was just kind of rushed but also a series would also i mean yeah i'd be down for a series uh, maybe even like yeah, multiple seasons too, because like just like let's say the first season is just the story, and the second yeah. season is like maybe something going on uh, on another part yeah. of the world or something, or the third season would be like two years later. And yeah, just, it's yeah. very much like a quiet place. You know, they 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 build a universe that is potentially realistic enough to where it's believable and so yeah you could totally turn something like this into a longer running series or you know a limited li limited showing or something yeah yeah absolutely uh yeah because so overall johnny I, how how did you think about it like are, are you glad you watched this movie or yeah or... i i mean it, it's i i don't want to i i it did it did a good job. It, for some reason, I don't know what it was exactly. I still can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe it's just because it's fresh in my mind and I just finished watching it before we started, actually. Um, it reminded me of how I kind of felt with Hereditary at the beginning with the family where they're attempting to establish the dynamics on what's going on because that's very important. Um, but obviously, not as not as well done, um, you know. You know my thing with hereditary. I I just didn't like the last forty five yeah, minutes. Yeah, you bring it up every <laughs> single chance you get. I do, I do. I do. <laughs> Which, well, it sucks, man. I mean, it's it's one of those movies that like it should be one of my top three favorite horror movies of all time. It was done well enough. You're to you're, you're a I'll closet hereditary lover. I, I'm gonna have to, I'll have to I'll have to watch it again because I want myself to like it. It's like Midsommar, yeah. I just fucking hate it. I gotta hate uh, Midsommar. There's nothing else. That's, that's the other like. movie you, you bring up every <laughs> Ari Aster is just overrated. Um, hey, uh, <laughs> but, uh, people listening to this, if you go to I Don't Give a Flick podcast, or just put on any random episode, like just any, anyone. And I'll mention it. Yeah, he'll, much he'll I, mention I have it. a hard on for James Wan. <laughs> yeah, that that's is. true. <laughs> Man, I gotta talk to you offline about a malignant sometime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was that was a fun interesting one not my favorite of his but it it was it's it's kind of it's kind of that it's that same thing they they did a good job even if it was boring dialogue i just thought they did a good job of establishing the relationships between everybody and the slow progression from normalcy to insanity you know within a two hour within a two hour crime uh i i won't i won't get my rating on it obviously but i oh. i enjoyed watching it i didn't it wasn't like mandy was good i appreciated mandy for what it was trying to accomplish more than i actually enjoyed watching it this okay. was a good balance for me i appreciated what they were trying to do but i also did get into the story and kind Definitely of more, more theatrical or like it more it's more yeah. of a movie than mandy was right Ma and mandy's you know, like yeah. an experience it uh, is it's like an art exhibit that color out of space is, is an actual movie <laughs> sure, sure yeah i thought it was well done i mean you know it had a uh, it, 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 the casting for stuff like this on on bigger budget, yeah, you know, I think what was the budget like six to twelve million or something. So it was a good size budget. Yeah. They, you know, I mean, a lot of it was it was very aesthetically pleasing. It was very pretty. 
Uh, I actually really liked the soundtrack. Uh, I th- I don't know who the composer was, but whoever put it together did a very yeah, good I'm job sure. of keeping it, uh, keeping it almost like a sci-fi soundtrack. Like a lot of a lot of the a lot of the music, you know, you not necessarily hearing synthesizers in it or anything, but it had a good mix of. Some it was like good alien music. I don't really know how to explain it better than that. I mean, um, yeah, that was probably the point. Yeah, yeah, but, but I, yeah. I appreciated it. I enjoyed watching it. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't say no to watching it again for somebody that wanted to see a cage exploitation film and wanted a good example of what he's been doing. This I, would be yeah. one that I would show. I'd say him. It was a good example. That's exactly yeah, sure. what I'm doing this Saturday with my husband. Oh, yeah. dope! <laughs> you should watch all of them. <laughs> uh, not maybe not all, but at least this one. Okay. Yeah. It's not a maybe not all, but just one. <laughs> you gotta ease him. You gotta ease him into it, you know? Uh, yeah. This this movie it ain't gonna it's not gonna win a bunch of uh awards or anything like that. But uh, you know, you can appreciate it for what it was. Didn't take itself too seriously, and I, I always I hate it when movies try to do that. When they have a out of the box concept like this and mm. try to take themselves too seriously and try yeah. to just make it too artsy or go the extra mile to make it more authentic. I'm like, look, man, this is, it's, it's, we'll suspend belief as much as we can, but there's only so much that I can suspend that belief. You know, at yeah, some point it's going to break. And again, that Nick Cage really helps with that, too. Yeah, yeah, he does. With his <laughs> acting style. And it's the same thing you're talking about. His acting style attributes to the believability of the story. You know, it's, 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 an, it's enough cheesiness and it's enough, it's enough goofiness almost uh and edgy edgy enough to to where it it works so yeah it's true it, it's... ufo believer <laughs> yeah yeah actually that's a really good way to put it, it, it it's really a shame that, that this movie is so like unknown that um you, you know because I, I i feel like a lot of people would really enjoy this one uh um, yeah. yeah like like Ma- mandy is is definitely like that like diamond that, or that gem that you just like you discover and you're like holy shit like the this is this is it's not a mainstream movie this is closer to a mainstream movie i guess and um but uh yeah but if you go to the the facebook group the movie so bad they're good one uh when this movie came out it blew up like nobody outside of my facebook group had any idea this existed but when it came out <laughs> it, the facebook group everybody was just like yes this this is because <laughs> it's it's that like midnight cult classic thing like i remember our uh alamo draft house downtown on 6th street played midnight screenings of this movie and mandy okay. um and that's and, and for like one weekend and that was mm. it and so it, that's why i'm pretty much that's another reason why i'm covering it on this show because it's, it's definitely not a, a bad movie or so bad as good movie is it's it's got that instant cult following like this just came out a couple years ago and the like the day it came out it already had a cult following so mm-hmm. yeah but uh brie how about you what, what's your history with this movie what, when did you first see it uh what, what were your th- overall thoughts you know, it's funny you bring up the Facebook group. Um, I first learned about it when everybody was trying to submit at least eight posts about this movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> I remember, like, in the chat discussing, hey, this dude has just tried to post about it, and now this person's trying to post about it. Do we accept? Do we decline? Mm-hmm. Uh, it took me a little while to watch it, though. Um, yeah, me I'd too, say, actually. I, I, th- I think maybe I was put off at first. Really? Maybe- even the even the the Nick Cage lover that you are, I am. Um, but I don't want to like diss a member of their gr- our groups. But some people will try and <laughs> post questionable things. I love our group, but people will try and post like things that I'm like, uh, mm. like Velocipaster, for example. Okay, I love Velocipaster. <laughs> Great okay. fucking movie, by the way. <laughs> not, yeah, I would try But that. but you remember when it came out. <laughs> Oh, and that's so true. We had oh. to establish a rule: don't post Velocipaster because that was a specific <laughs> rule. Wow. Do not post this movie. Wow. Yeah. Because why did y'all decide to not do that? We were getting like nine posts a day. Yeah. About that oh, one shit. movie. <laughs> it was bonkers. Uh, Colorado uh, Space definitely not as much, and uh, a, a couple other. Uh, one of uh, our fellow admins didn't like it. 
it was talking a lot of shit about it. So that might have. I mean, it's admin will a... remain unnamed, of course. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> not like a great. It's not like it's not like an ode to the classics of cinema or anything. Well, no, like, she, she, she just didn't movie. like the pink involved. Yeah. She was like, "This movie's pink." <laughs> what? Yeah. That's, the reason? <laughs> yeah. That's a stupid fucking reason. With all due respect to this person who shall not be named. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I hope you're listening oh. to this because that uh, I want to hear. Yeah, hear they, more they were in the group more for the the B movies side of okay. it. Okay, right. yeah. But uh, um, but anyway, so yeah, I I yeah, uh, me too. Yeah, I don't think I saw the movie until like about a year and a half since it yeah. came out. Mine uh. was about a year later, actually. During when mm -hmm. I'm in lockdown, I think I had COVID at. I thought I had COVID. At the time. I also I had COVID when I saw it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll watch this just to see what the hype is about. And I'm really glad I watched it. Um, and the fact Ooh. that, again, I don't want to give my rating just yet, but I, I love mm -hmm. this movie. I, you know, I'm not much the cinematographer person. You know, Johnny brings up these isolation shots. There's one isolation shot that really stands out to me. And it's when Nick Cage, like, pours bourbon shot onto a skin. Uh, a, oh, that's yeah. weird. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But as it zooms in on this woodwork piece of what looks like to be a dog, you know, kind of, like, melding together. And I was like, that's kind of strangely reminiscent. Remisent, rem existent of a movie I won't shut up about, kind of like Johnny. Uh, I will never shut up about the thing, ever. Oh yeah. And so you know when they showed that woodwork, I was like, whoa, it's kind of cool. But then they, you know, Nicolas Cage goes into the barn and he sees all the packos fields together, and I was like, <laughs> oh fuck yeah, okay. Now now we're really just like, this is just language. like the dogs in the kennel. <laughs> Exactly. Now we're really yeah. speaking my language. I love the movie beforehand, yeah. but that was like what uh, that, that's definitely the, deal. the Lovecraftian. Yeah, the whole thing of the body horror. Absolutely. Uh, that is very unique to the Lovecraft stories. Is it's like, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's out otherworldly. It, you either get described as it's something you can't comprehend or oh my god this is the most horrific body horror that you can imagine yeah there's, there's no in between yeah. uh, incomprehensible <laughs> yeah that, that's that's definitely what i mean yeah otherworldly or alien or yeah just something that you've never seen before in your life and can't ever imagine and you can't even understand what you're seeing which uh yeah which i uh yeah, probably my favorite part of this movie is the whole thing with the the mom and the son where they fuse oh. together, and we don't God, see yeah, that. that was... Like we we see something happens to them, and we don't see them. We just see the reaction of everybody around them. Like whoa! Like I would, I would like to have seen that. Shit. Honestly, I would I would like to have seen a little bit more. I mean, it's gonna go down yeah. the it's gonna go down the, the the Lovecraft route anyways. Like it already is. Yeah, like, I mean, we do not... see what they look like. Yeah, I, I guess I would have liked it. Actually, I, it reminded me of you guys ever heard of the Daniels? They're the guy, they're two guys named Daniel. They directed a Swiss Army man with Daniel. Radcliffe. Okay, I saw, I saw, okay. wait, I know, yeah, that yeah, movie. I did see that, but yeah, 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 where he and uh, and Paul Dano, um, were anyways. So they did a short film called Interesting Ball, and uh, I'll send you the link later. It is a fucking hoot. Now, uh, basically, this ball. It, it takes us through like uh, the this ball's journey and all the people that the ball has oh, interacted with and w one of these people it's two guys and they both start to form into each other in fact the one guy so one guy's sleeping on the couch the other guy comes over and he's trying to wake him up or something and he slowly starts to get sucked into this guy's ass and it's just ridiculous <laughs> it's just it's so fucking obscene but it's so funny okay. it's so great and that I would have liked to have, not necessarily. I didn't want them to, to emulate that necessarily, but I I wanted to see the the morphing of the mom and the son a little bit more. I wanted okay. to see the process. I thought that would have been cool. No, yeah, definitely. It, it was probably you probably did it for like budgetary reasons, for, or sure. yeah, like yeah, or that. just not having the technology for that, or the time. Right. Same. Or the time. Yeah, <laughs> or the time. It does take a while. That's probably an all day shoot right there. Yeah, um, but. Uh, but I like I, I do like the way that they did it. Like you, you don't see it, and it makes you wonder. It like reels you in, um, right. and then you finally do see them. And whatever you're expecting, it's not even that. 
it's like like what what could it be i don't know i i imagine something hideous I and mean, then you do see them fused together and somehow it still blows your mind and especially uh, when it charges at the daughter lavinia Ooh. Yeah. Jeez. oh yeah well when it's like the final form because yeah. <laughs> they, they look evolve even more um yeah but it, it like that that's my kind of or i don't know my favorite kind of but what up there one of my favorite kinds of horror is that kind of where like you see the reaction of the people around you like that that's something right. that i i really enjoy i love watching reactions I'm one of those losers who watches YouTube videos of people reacting to other movies and music and stuff. <laughs> uh, like, no matter how many times I've seen a movie, every time I, I find out somebody hasn't seen a a certain movie, I'll be like, well, we gotta watch this. And then the whole time I'm watching them <laughs> react to it, and I get mad when they don't react to it the way I want them to. But anyway, I digress. Um... Have y'all seen the Amityville Horror? Yes. Uh, newer or old? Or the no. yeah. Definitely. Old yeah, old. the old one, of course. Yeah. Uh, I, guess I, I, I guess I've seen both. But... As, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so remember at the the part where like the at the near the end, the guy like he goes into like a room and he sees this evil or whatever this demonic force that we don't see, but we see his reaction to it. Mm. And I that is really one of my one of the, my favorite scenes I've ever seen in a horror film is just watching his reaction to whatever he's looking at. Yeah, just leaves it up to the imagination. Exactly. You know? I mean, hell, we've Absolutely. talked about that on a ton of episodes. You know, uh, your your imagination is the scariest part of oh, the script yeah. when the directors can do that. It's the I mean, mm -hmm. that's I'm gonna let me suck on the James Wan dick really quick. You know, it's that same scene <laughs> from the. Cup from the conjuring where the this one of the sisters wakes up and she's like i see something in the corner and then she turns the light on but that one corner is pitch black next to the door mm -hmm. and she walks over and she's like oh i smell rotting meat but there's nothing here and then it's just that slow zoom into the corner along with the girl's face and then it's a slow zoom back into the sister who's describing it and it that that was that's the part that gave gave me the goosebumps you know so i i completely yeah. agree with you that's usually the scariest part of any horror film is where they leave it up to your imagination to decide yeah. what the monster yeah. looks like yeah uh, uh yeah for sure uh you, you know what i'm gonna go a, a little off but I, johnny have you ever seen lights out oh yeah did you watch the short by the way did i yeah no i love the short oh, a lot yeah more now. i i, I'm actually I like the not movie a too the movie. I, I thought it was I, funny. See, I, I, <laughs> I thought it was entertaining. I really did. Yeah, I, I thought the movie was a little too much of sure. that concept. Yeah, but yeah. The yeah, short yeah. is, yeah, absolutely. Oh, the incredible. short's masterful. God, the yep. short, it's one of the best horror shorts I would have to say I've ever seen. Mm, hands down. Cargo. Um, I know they did like a whole okay. Netflix series. Before they did like the whole Netflix series, Cargo was a YouTube short about you know the whole zombie apocalypse, the dad trying to keep the daughter alive. It, I would very uh, much recommend that as well. Okay. The, do, you, like, do you think shorts. that... Oh, shorts. Okay. Yeah, anyway, shorts. I was about to... Wait, you know what? Maybe, maybe we could do an episode with just like a bunch of shorts. Horror Ooh. shorts and stuff. That'd be yeah. cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. I agree. Uh, and it's so bad they're good caliber. Would, would you say that that would fit this podcast? So bad it's good? No. I mean, oh, that is okay. masterpiece, <laughs> honestly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's kind of like, kind of like back rooms. <laughs> Um, but if it's Colt, if it's if it's Colt following, oh, you can do it, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know yeah. what you consider. Maybe I would say the, I would say the the lights out short kind of kind of falls into that. It's not a not a bunch of people know what it is, you know. I mean, you really have to be a, yeah. a diehard avid horror fan, yeah, to, true, to have heard about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, back to Color of Space. Uh, mm -hmm. Another another part that I I, I definitely appreciate is Tommy Sean. He, he's i always love saying him <laughs> it's just it's so random that he's there but like he did the character pretty well uh especially like when he's dead when they come back to to his cabin mm. and, and he's dead and you he just he's he's like i guess died listening to his own tape his own <laughs> notes <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's like it's slowing down and speeding up simultaneously and yeah. it's just so eerie i i like that i mean it, i thought it was definitely 
the most pointless part of the movie. But <laughs> but it was fun. Uh, or a couple pointless parts, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, at least he's explaining, <laughs> hey, this is this is what it is, you know? Yeah. Like this is the color out of space. And it's like, ah, oh, he said the title, but Oh like, yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> I don't hey, know. This guy hey. Yeah. <laughs> But he said the title, but I mean I sure it's pointless but i mean i think that was one of the most creepiest just his tone of voice oh yeah as i i think i think that they pretty much just like the director had that idea and he's like Mm. i'm just i just have to throw this in the movie somewhere (laughs) because i like it (laughs) (laughs) he's just like well i wonder where he probably created the entire character just for that scene too (laughs) yeah um, but, uh, you know, something that I find really interesting is the sense of time in this movie. Days go by really quick. So, yeah, I, uh, this is either the, a bad script writing or a very absolute amazing sense of madness taking hold. Which is um, so it's either really good or really bad, but it's basically so the mom she she cuts her fingers off. They drive to the hospital, which is they're in the middle of town, so they have to drive into town, which is a while. And then, but it's not too far. But then it's like then it's the next day, and they're not back yet. They're still at the hospital. They're trying to call them, but they can't get through. And then they come back like the same night. Uh, or yeah, like it, well, it's the next night from the next when they night, left. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I don't think that it would take. It's at least twenty four hours. Yeah, and I would. I would say. It's, I would say it's even longer than twenty four hours because when they leave, the dad says, "Put the alpacas in the barn by ten yeah. o'clock. Yeah. Make yeah. sure it's ten o'clock." Then when he gets back, he sees the route. He says they should have been back, put away, hours ago. So this is like. 30 hours later. This is not just like a full day, but this is, and then some. So it's weird for a hospital visit, even though it's like the next town over for it to take like, a, I, let's say 30 hours like that. That's really weird. And, but the, during the daytime, it, it goes by really quick. And even like the brother, he says, it was just daytime, and then I got lost, and all of a sudden it's night. So I feel like in the, in this space where this meteor landed, the, like it's a reality itself is being distorted. Yeah. Or or right. they're just succumbing to madness, and they don't yeah, have there's, there's any no idea what's going. They're like hallucinating or something. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot of hallucinations, time. but like could be like times going faster and like. That's pretty standard, though. I mean, that's pretty common with a lot of horror films when they show you the slow process to insanity. Like, if you look at, um, like, The Babadook, that that uh, uh, horror that came out. Another, of another movie you, you love. That, <laughs> yeah, I do. But it's you know, they, they do a lot of, like, time lapses with the mom sitting in this chair in the corner of the living room, uh-huh. and days go by. You know, it shows, like, it shows, you know, 72 hours passing by in a matter of 15 seconds kind of thing just to really drive home the point that these guys are slowly going insane and uh so that that makes sense like it you know i i, I did appre- yeah. i appreciated that part I, I I, yeah i i find it it is really interesting to think about so like outside of of this farm it, it's just like everything is just going by regularly like they were probably out for maybe five hours but to reattach them, fingers? I don't know. Yeah, well, might yeah, true. But I mean, I, I'll, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, the point I'm I'm trying to make is, it, for them, for for the parents, they were out within one night. Like they can't, they came back the same night. Right, not that thirty plus hours for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because like it just doesn't make sense that they were. I mean, it's probably maybe. Let's give it an hour to drive into town, um, uh, and then an hour back. So that's two hours. And then, yeah. I mean, granted, they're they're probably sitting in the emergency room for <laughs> a couple hours. Yeah, especially like, a small it, town it, like that. Yeah, in America. And, in America, but, I was about to say they got yeah, to verify if they have insurance or not. <laughs> right. 
But I mean, do, do you think it, it would be like the next night and then several hours later? No, I don't I mean, know if it would be 24 hours, but I could see it be 12 and stuff. I mean, having yeah. your having uh, fingers cut off, I mean, that's it's I don't know if it's major surgery, but it's definitely surgery. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't I've never had a toes or fingers chopped off, so I couldn't attest. Right. You know, personally. <laughs> Damn it, we, need, we need somebody here. God, find I mean, somebody. I'm, find an amputee quick. I mean, I'm a, I'm a nursing student, but um, it depends. Like. Obviously, there's obvious variables, like things like that. Did he ice the fingers or not? You know, yeah. it's variables. Um, and since it was only two fingers, you know, and it, it was recent. It was like the I'm tips, a... too. Right. It wasn't like I the don't know whole if that fingers. Makes a difference, uh, but... It does. Like, I mean, if we're talking like the whole bone, if we're talking just, just the tip, you know. I think, it, I think it was down to <laughs> like the, the middle knuckle. Right. I, there's so many variables. A little above that. I, I would say like based off this fictional movie, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'd say it wouldn't take more than 12 hours, just like Johnny yeah. said. You know. So, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like there, there's like a time warp, basically, is, oh, is the point that I'm making. Yeah. Give her and, and like, you know, the brother, he even said, like, it was just daytime, now it's night. What's going on? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, I, f I find that really cool. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, well, I, I briefly brought it up, or as Creep Show, Johnny, have you seen Creep Show, the original? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's an anthology movie. It's all written, it's a bunch of the short stories written by Stephen King and directed mm -hmm. by um, uh, Brie, what's his name? George uh, Romero. George Romero. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, it, it's pretty fun. Uh, one of the short films is uh about a farmer. He's in the middle of nowhere. He, he's on a farm. Stephen King himself. Yeah, yeah, played by Stephen King. He acted in it. Oh, good. yeah, yes. Oh, goody. <laughs> and he he's like one of those like traditional, just cheesy farmers. Like, oh boy, oh, there, there's a meter. So a meter landed. So there's a snake in my boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. So a meter landed. He's like, he's talking to his dog or whatever. And it's just like, oh, we're gonna be rich. Oh, hoo hoo. And like he basically like he he wants to grab the meteor and like sell it for sci to science for money, and um, basically what happens is that he touches it and grass or whatever starts growing on his hand, and of uh, he's he's a hick, so of course he licks it. <laughs> he's a hillbilly, so he and so it starts grow growing on his tongue, and uh, basically. During the short story, the this like this like nature from outer space, it, it's a green color from space, uh, takes over his body and his farm and everything, and like he takes a bath and it like grows even more and it like completely takes over him, and uh, he succumbs to madness basically, but also he becomes a monster just like in this movie, so. Uh, yeah, so basically, I I think the color of space might be, Brie, would you would you think that it, it might be, I guess, inspired by Creep Show? I mean, you do definitely have the original story, Color Out of Space, by H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, true. I think yeah. people have pulled elements out of it. So obviously, George Romero pulled elements out of it. The Thing pulled elements out of it. And then this movie kind of pulled elements from these past mm -hmm. movies. I don't want to say for sure, you know, everything is kind of pulled from this one source to this one source. I think everyone's kind of interconnected on this. Because, again, when we talk about H.P. Lovecraft, his writing is vague at best. Yeah. So I haven't read a whole lot, but what, the, what little I have read was, yeah, I'd say pretty vague. It's vague, so maybe this person gets inspired by this, and then this person gets inspired by this, but this one person really likes this, but I also likes elements from this. So there, mm -hmm. anytime we talk about Lovecraft, there's going to be people pulling from other sources plus the original source, because when we talk about the original source, there's, there's not really much to work from in terms of visual effects. Yeah, true. Things like that. But, but I, I do think this movie has pulled ideas from a few movies a few movies yeah or or maybe that segment from creep show came from the lovecraft story 
Absolutely. I can absolutely but, believe that and then changed a few. And uh, it, it definitely just totally reminded me uh, of it. Like, yeah, I was like, yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's a whole like color is green. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Uh, e- either of y'all have anything you'd like to bring up uh, that we haven't talked about? Or this movie, or no, I think mm-hmm. covered everything on on my end. Um, yeah. So, but basically, yeah, I guess the 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 whole family goes crazy. The ones who are left, at least. Uh, How the they're... hell do they take that act? Sorry, the uh, younger brother. I'm really surprised that they just keep traumatizing this young actor so much. <laughs> the kid from, uh... He probably hasn't even uh, been allowed to watch. Yeah, what movie. was he in? I was trying to figure that out earlier. He looks so familiar. Uh, it's um. Yeah, the little kid. Uh, uh, Haunting the Hill House. Okay. Where they also traumatized that kid. So I mean, this kid's probably traumatized okay. for life. So I'm just. I think I may have seen him. He's probably else. like, why won't they let me watch these movies? I, I was in. Uh... <laughs> like damn kid because yeah, really like in, in this movie all they really had him do is just stand in front of the well and whistle <laughs> and then morph into his mom <laughs> yeah but like yeah. I, I actual don't know actor how... wise right right yeah I don't, I don't think you really see both of them in the same shot really either I don't think so either, but I mean, like, if we're talking, like, actual human kid-wise, yeah, just in front of the well. Mm-hmm. That, that was about it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, so basically, yeah, so I guess it's implied that this what this alien substance that we can't really comprehend pretty much spreads across the world, really. I mean, it blows up, but I think it, it also probably continues at the same time. Yeah, and you I'm have curious. to wonder how many of those have also landed at other strategic yeah, points right? around Earth. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of like the happening in M. Night Shyamalan's movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta old, think about that movie now. Old, the old <laughs> crappening. Yep. <laughs> the trees, man. The trees are talking to us. I've heard so much shit guesses. about that movie that I never saw it. <laughs> Don't, for God's sake, Ian, don't. It's not a movie so bad it's good. It's a movie so utterly awful you want to die. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I've heard. It. That's why I haven't it. watched it. <laughs> good good call. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, well, yeah, so I guess we'll go into the next segment, which is the prompt, which I gave you, you know, it was like same as always. What was the sequel or prequel or anything? Uh, I have a couple ideas. Uh, what one like jokey idea? What one more serious pitch? Jokey one is I want to see the exact same movie but replace Nicolas Cage with Stephen King from Creep Show. <laughs> <laughs> but now, since we, I mean, that's where I started this episode. Wanting what uh, now? What I want is Tommy Wiseau. Oh, <laughs> he wouldn't say anything. He'd just be smashing glasses. The entire time. How do you show? Uh, the, how do you just show a descent into madness when he's already mad? Exactly. You like those alpacas should have been done hours ago. <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I can't really do a good Tommy. Enemy of pot, Tommy Chung. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're bringing Cheech in there. <laughs> You're telling me about Nicolas Cage, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but what, what do y'all have, uh, Bree? How, how about you? What would you come up with? So, as an actual side note that I wanted to bring up, they're actually thinking that this is going to be a trilogy. Um, Spectre really? Vision. They're going to oh. keep adapting more Lovecraft stories, and the next one they're thinking about doing is the Dunwich Horror, and. Uh, I, I really hope that they do do that. I'm really excited to see that. Um, I had kind of, you know, kind of like a jokey one as well. I was thinking about how it's like the happening, you know, at the same time it's happening in America, it's also happening elsewhere in France. Yeah, uh, yeah I told my joke too soon there. <laughs> Damn it. 
damn, I kind of <laughs> ruined it. But that was, that's my idea. It's kind of like seeing, and you mentioned it too earlier, Ian, about seeing how are different countries going to be reacting to this? Um, is it just going to be contained to the small area? So at Absolutely the end, not. the hydrologist <laughs> kind of reference at the end that nobody remembers like the strange days, you know, about what was it like before this color? I'd really like to see kind of like that post-apocalyptic sort of view as yeah. well. What does it mean for this color out of space to take over the world? Yeah. I just like some people are like different levels of madness. Like right. some people are like just fully and other people are just like not at all. And then there's people in the middle that would just be like, I have no idea what the fuck's going on. <laughs> right, and how does it affect nature? Because, I mean, we saw a tree take up the sheriff, you know? What does it yeah, affect true. on the surrounding area as well? Yeah. It's like yeah. an... It's very much like... Did you guys ever see Annihilation with Natalie Portman? No. Yep. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's basically this... It's it's kind of the same... Somewhat the same concept, this alien uh, meteor or comet or whatever. It comes smashing into Earth, and essentially every year or every day or whatever, it grows larger and larger in proximity, and everything inside of this bubble, that's the alien bubble, all of the vegetation and life inside of that bubble starts to mutate, and it starts to, like, become, like, it crossbreeds between, like, a pig and an orchid, you know, or, like, a, a fucking a cow and the farmer that lived over there. Um, and, yeah, just, yeah, very, very much in that same concept. Absolutely. Okay. For sure. Very yeah. Lovecraftian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Johnny, how about you? You got anything? Mine is going to be more along the lines of, I am proposing a creating of a, we've already got an MCU and a DCU. We got to have a cage CU. It's just got to yes. <laughs> It's just got to have a cage cinematic universe. Uh, at, at this point, I really would love, I know it's probably never going to happen, but maybe Spectre Vision will listen to this episode and catch an idea and I can get 5% of royalties for the idea. Um, right. <laughs> I would love to see some type of series put out about all of yeah. this. I mean, you think about it, between the horrible snooze fest that was um, Knowing, I don't know if you guys saw that Nick Cage one from 09, um, between that, between Mandy, between Colorado Space, even a Willy's Wonderland kind of thing, it's almost like the TV show Supernatural a little bit, where you've got mm. this one guy that continuously gets himself put into these supernatural and kind of like outer space situations, and he always has to figure his way out. So my, uh, my, my pitch is to actually say that every movie Nick Cage has done, for the most part, uh, is actually all in the same universe. All has to do with him just trying to escape what he's meant to do and what he's meant to do is fight ghosts and fight aliens and fight everything that goes bump in the night. And I would watch the shit out of a series that that had him doing that. Uh, so you take all of his previous movies that have been done and you kind of incorporate all of those storylines into this new series where he just travels the country or the world trying to get away from all this stuff, trying to get away from what he was put on this earth to do and, uh, and fight. He just wants to live a peaceful life. He's like Bruce Banner. You know, he didn't want to get angry. <laughs> I hate you okay. for bringing up I definitely have breast cancer but now I hate you even more for bringing up Supernatural <laughs> nice um, so I, I kind of want to see like this kind of branch out to the other Lovecraft movies like say The Thane or um, especially Mount, what was it called? Mountain of Madness or Mouth of Madness? Mouth, yeah, Mouth of Madness. Yes. Okay. Which, uh, yeah, is is basically like say this happens, and then uh, s somehow Mouth of Madness kind of like ties in. So kind kind of like what what Johnny was saying, but not Nick Cage exactly, but all the other Lovecraft movies that like kind of tie in together. Or yeah, um, so yeah. That, that's basically my my pitch. Or you know, like I was saying, a longer movie or a series. A series would be amazing, really. Um, like I said, the first season would be uh, this movie, basically, uh, just stretched out. And a second one would be maybe somewhere else in the world. And a third one, just like each one, 
e- each season is like progressively more of the apocalyptic, I guess. So yeah, mm-hmm. so make it make it happen, Spectre Vision. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I guess we'll go ahead and rate this thing. Um, I like it more than the first time I liked it. Uh, I've only watched it three times. Uh, well, two and a half, really. Uh, uh, the, the third time was right before we did this. And I was just like, kind of like at work, just like, you know. Hopping in around. the background, yeah, not not doesn't really count. So really, two times. First time was like a year and a half ago, which was a year and a half after it came out, and then I watched it recently to prepare for this, and I I liked it a lot the second time, but however, the first time was definitely a lot scarier. Um, so I don't know. I'm kind of mixed on it. It's definitely not my favorite, but I do really appreciate it. So, uh, I'll give it like eight alpacas fused oh, together. That's that's Ooh. high. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. Just since you said it wasn't your favorite, I was expecting it. it it's yeah, true. <laughs> I mean, you also saw me just sit there, like kind of like contemplating in my head. Now, like, out of like all the body body horror. <laughs> movies as body snatcher movies the thing invasion of the body snatchers where would you rate it then good question that is a good question i don't i don't know i it might actually because of the production company and cage and the cinematography probably above the others mm-hmm. technically but above the thing Listen, we're gonna fight now. No, <laughs> really? I, yeah, kind of. Actually, like really? I'm, actually, I'm wow. not as. I mean, big the cinematography. A, I mean, the cinematography. I'll, I'll give him that. I, I'm actually yeah. not as big of a fan of the thing as y'all are. Really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I have full I appreciation that. for it, but yeah, it's actually not my favorite. Hmm. I mean, yeah, but um, is it better than the fly? You know, uh, I haven't is that seen technically the flight a, a long body snatcher? Time. It's a slow body snatcher. It's a very slow <laughs> body snatcher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't seen that in a long time. I need to rewatch it. So I can't really answer that. I mean, it's been several years. But uh, anyway, Bree, how about you? How do you rate it? Wow. Uh, I mean, you kind of hit on a lot of the points I love. I love the color palette, that pink. I yeah. I thought that was the perfect color for that this. That definitely brings it up for me. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That, that brought it up a lot more for me. Um, I love the Lovecraftian sort of genre. Um, in fact, on Johnny's podcast, I don't give a flick. I kind of even brought that up a little bit. I love the body horror. I you love did. the Lovecraftian genre. Um and I love Nick Cage. So it's taken a lot of the things I love and creating a gross conglomeration, just like those alpacas that I love. Um, and for that reason, um, I really got to give it, I would say, seven dishes that need to be washed. <laughs> it's dishwashing time, kids. It's dishwashing time. It's dishwashing time. <laughs> I, I actually completely forgot about that until... I just I, it's this. so funny for some reason. Just the way that he was all like already over top acting, like right off the bat, no saving it. Or maybe like seven copies of like Necronomicon, like okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh oh shit. That that reminds I totally forgot to bring up another thing, but before I nope, do I got you. uh Johnny, you go ahead with yours and then I'll I'll bring up the thing that I forgot to bring up earlier. You can bring it up right now if you want. Right, oh no! I finish your so. rating. No, no, no! Do it. Yeah, we have. Yeah, for, we have to do the rating. Okay. Uh, I yeah, you know, it was it was good. I feel like this is it's one of the first times that I can actually say that I can put a movie that we've reviewed on a normal cinematic scale from one to ten. Typically, I feel like 
I, I, I we're doing a lot of I, if it's a movie so bad it's good or if it's a, a cult classic then it's going to be super low budget so I'll typically put it on that kind of that lower tier or a different scale like more of an entertainment scale than a than a cinema package uh, for this one yeah man I I give it a solid I give it a, little, a six and a half out of uh, six and a half blunts I wish I could smoke with Tommy Chong I don't know I feel like it, <laughs> I, I feel like movies like this I I met some people on my trip. Uh, when I was in Colorado and they had talked about, they were very much into doing a lot of psychedelics to try to converse with astro planes, like other planes of existence. Uh, like, like, uh, like ayahuasca. Yeah. Yeah. Like ayahuasca. That was one okay. of the ones they used, you know, use a lot of, uh, use a lot of LSD, um, stuff like that, but DMT. yeah. And DMT and stuff. And so I kind of felt like I was like, this seems kind of like one of those movies where I might appreciate it more if I was really stoned. Um, uh, I mean, that'd be like any movie, really. But... <laughs> yeah, I mean, to an extent, sure. I mean, it definitely, you know, weed certainly makes a lot of things better. And it's I, cer I certainly miss it. Uh, yeah. But for something like this, I feel like I would get into it even more had I had a blunt, you know, in front of me. I, I feel like I, I maybe even would have understood what the director was going for at confusing parts uh when i i don't know but yeah you know i mean it was it, it was solid you know everything that i said earlier um there were a few things that detracted just you know giant plot holes in the script that's fine um but yeah you know I, i'd say a six and a half a six out of ten it was it was solid you know and that's on a regular cinema scale for me so so it's nice to be able to 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 do an actual cinema scale for once <laughs> yeah um uh, okay cool sweet so uh the thing that i was gonna bring up was the Necronomicon. Uh, you notice that the asteroid came right after she was reading from ne Necronomicon. Yep. And then the, when the thing exploded and fused the mom and the kid together was when she was practicing witchcraft. So we can blame this all on the daughter. It's all her yeah. fault. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he practiced witchcraft. She read from Necronomicon and then all this bad shit happened. It is her fault. You never read for the Necronomicon. Every, what any dip. practicing witch knows this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so that, that'll conclude the episode. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will uh, go and uh, ahead and tease the next episode, which uh, is, I got a clip right here. I wanna, I wanna buy some uh, radio ad time. That is Bill Mosley. Are you fucking crazy? We are closed. Off the air till tomorrow. You'll have to just come back. No, but, but yeah, but, whoa. So this is Radio <laughs> Land, huh? The infinite turtle, the, the waves through the ether fuzz roll on forever. Roar! For those who haven't seen this, this is a radio station. <laughs> Creepy looking motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Babe. <laughs> Me and Bubba, my little brother, we listen to you every night. <laughs> Music is my life. <laughs> you know, you're my fave, but, but I get too embarrassed to phone in my request. It's too disembodied, you know? <laughs> But uh, uh, now that we're here in, in flesh and blood, I, I could maybe make a request and, and it'd still count, huh? Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. This is another movie that I really love the color palette of. Oh, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, just like butterfly. the intense red <laughs> like, uh, and the greens. Uh, in a Vita de Gata, baby. <laughs> oh, it's heavy. Like, it's just you know, like so never unreal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Before. Do you think you could do me a tour, huh? Yeah, maybe it's just tour. the feminine side of me, but I just, I love the pinks. The straight up pinks. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm, sure. I mean, I, I, I like it because it's so unreal, you know? Oh, boy, okay. And that otherworldly sure. feeling. Yeah. Okay, your tour. Here's your tour. Here's your also, tour. Here's kind of like reminds you that it's a movie <laughs> and not Here's to take Tom seriously. Oh. Rubber man. Uh, rubber man, I like him. <laughs> Armadillo. <laughs> Here's Mr. Shark. Oh, Mr. Shark. Sure. <laughs> I wonder how much that armadillo beanie baby goes for nowadays. <laughs> They'll like that exact one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
there's a lamp. Remember when I remember when I collected hey, Beanie Babies? Ooh. How did uh? Oh, from that. Man. Not, 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 not much. Damn it. <laughs> it's not as good as it was a decade ago. If I had done, if I had gotten rid of them in the early 2000s, I would have made a lot more money. <laughs> that that clip ended way too quick. I wish I'd known that before I uploaded it. Basically, what happens was Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre oh, just shit. comes out of a room like he he just like chainsaw and everything. He just he's just there. As she mm -hmm. runs out, and he accidentally hits Bill Mosley, mm -hmm. shop top, in the head. He has a metal plate, and he's like, "Oh, you hit my head, you dog dick! <laughs> you uh, dog dick! Yeah. <laughs> you hit me in the head, you dog dick! What kind of an insult is that? <laughs> it's a strange okay. insult to say to someone. No, it, it's uh, such a cheesy. Bree, I can tell you, being from Texas, I've never heard anybody insult me like that. that uh, a Texas <laughs> Chainsaw Massacre one. Ah, okay. I'll correct it. Yeah. Gotcha. So yeah, this is Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, uh, which uh, yeah, it's got Bill Mosley as Chop Top. I, I love Bill Mosley. He's he's a he's very funny. underrated actor. Uh, he, he's also in the Rob Zombie movies as Otis and House of Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects and Three from Hell. Uh, I think he, him and Sid Haig, they, they were like definitely the the two really good ones of, of those movies. But uh, yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. That this is his breakout role, and it, it's it, it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but it's, it's more campy and more fun and with intense lighting <laughs> yes but uh yeah so brie you, you'll be with me on that one i will along with our uh secret special guests i'm really excited for that for sure uh, yeah uh yeah for sure and uh they'll actually be on the next episode after that actually oh that's, okay that's purposes. oh but... <laughs> whoops my bad i'm sorry oh, that's but all right. secret gotta... so you know yeah. we're just yeah. gonna get them excited well beforehand so they have to watch the next episode right. to think who i'm referring to and then the next episode after that right i i am so confused right now but yes <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that, that'll do it for this episode of Cold Trash Horror Movie Grand. Uh, Johnny, th thanks again, as always. Always. Uh, yeah, check him out at I Don't Give a Flick Podcast. Yeah, check uh, us out on Spotify, Pandora, Google, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. Uh, everywhere, you say. On all the major ones. <laughs> <laughs> all the major if there's If there's a small one that uh, I've never heard of before, it's most likely not on that. <laughs> Damn it, those are my favorite ones. Yeah, for the podcast yeah. On. <laughs> absolutely and uh brie as always it's always a pleasure thank you for having me it's mm -hmm. always a pleasure to be here glad to see you again yeah absolutely for sure and uh yeah that, this is a fun episode and uh yeah uh, can't wait to have both of you on again and sure. uh well what this has been another episode we've tried johnny to get your your co-host gary onto this one and it failed yet again we can uh, try. I know that moving forward, he's off on uh, on weekends for this month. So if we yeah. want to try again, we can shoot for a Saturday or Sunday, maybe. We are doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre two on a Saturday. So I don't know, if if you're interested in that one, maybe I'd, I'd be down. Yeah, let's we'll talk after. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, for, yeah, right. <laughs> um, all right. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks everybody for stopping by. Uh, see you next week. <laughs>